So, the sickness for today, to the church age believer, sickness can come as a result of violating God's laws. Indeed, there are times when people get sick simply because they violate the laws of nature, which God has established. When you get sick, eat some poison. Eat bad food. Don't exercise. In other words, if we do not care of our, take care of our bodies, then we put ourselves at risk of becoming ill. Indeed, we find that God gave the nation Israel certain laws to follow, dietary laws, while they were traveling in the wilderness toward the promised land. Today, you look at the foods that they were told not to eat to eat, and they're good. That's a good diet. These laws not only had ceremonially ceremonial value. Might as well correct that. They were also given for the continued health of the people. If the people of Israel violated these laws, then illness could result. We will provide a few examples from Scripture. Sewage was to be kept separate from the people. Hello? Common sense? In a very practical manner. Now, if you, eat, if you constantly eat something that's contaminated with some sewage or something else, which... Uh, a lot of times, uh, back in the old Roman times, they uh, their sewage water seeped into their regular drinking water, and a lot of them got really ill and died. So in a very practical matter, God commanded that the people of the nation of Israel keep their sewage outside of the place where they camped. We read about this precaution in the book of Deuteronomy. It says the following, Designate a place outside the camp where you can go to relieve yourself. As part of your equipment, have something to dig with. And when you relieve yourself, dig a hole and cover up your excrement. For the Lord your God moves about in your camp to protect you and to deliver your enemies to you. Your, your camp must be holy, so that he will not see among you any indecent, anything indecent and turn away from you. This law not only kept the camp holy, it protected the people from various diseases which could result by living amongst raw sewage. In the same manner, we need to practice simple laws of sanitation where we live. If we do not, then sickness can result. They were to wash with water and coming into contact with things unclean after doing that. In the book of Leviticus, we, we read <coughs> what was to take place if a member of the nation came into contact with anything unclean. We read the following words of Moses. <coughs> Everything the man sits on when writing will be unclean. And whoever touches any of the things that were under him will be unclean till evening. Whoever picks up those things must wash their clothes and bathe with water, and they will be unclean till evening. <clears throat> Whenever anyone touched something which was unclean, that person had to wash themselves in the manner which God prescribed. This included using running water as well as some type of antiseptic. Again, the violation of these rules, these laws, could cause someone to be physically ill as well as trans referring disease to others. The same holds true today. If we come into contact with something which is diseased, then we must take the proper steps to safeguard ourselves from catching the disease. The people were isolated when contacting certain diseases. We will give one more example. God commanded those who had some type of contagious disease to be isolated from the people. The book of Leviticus gives us the following instructions. When anyone has a defiling skin disease, they must be brought to the priest. The priest is to examine him, and if there is a white swelling in the skin that has turned the hair white, and if examined, the hair white, examined, and if there is a white swelling in the skin that has turned the hair white, and if there is a is raw flesh in the swelling, it is a chronic skin disease, and the priest shall pronounce them unclean. He is not to isolate them because they are already unclean. This is another practical step which God gave to people to keep the people of Israel from con contacting some kind of communicable disease. Those who were contagious were to be kept separate from the rest of the people. In the same manner today, we keep those who have communicable diseases isolated from the population until they are no longer contagious. To sum up, God gave these laws to his people for a purpose. If these laws were violated, then sickness could be the result. The same holds true for t us today. If we do not use common sense in taking care of our bodies, the sickness will, may be the result. There is nothing supernatural occurring if this takes place. Therefore, sickness does not always have a supernatural cause to it. 
sickness itself is not sin. We also want to emphasize that nowhere in the Bible equates sickness with sin. This illustrates, illustrated in an episode in the life of Jesus, we read of the following episode. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Answer, there's neither this man nor his parents sinned, just said Jesus. But this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in, in his life. That was in John 9, 1 to 3. <clears throat> Jesus' disciples assumed that this man was blind because of some sin which he or his parents may have committed. However, in this case, Jesus taught otherwise. His blindness was actually going to result in the glory of God. Indeed, Jesus miraculously healed this man, giving him sight for the first time in his life. Thus, it was not his sin that caused him blindness. This brings up an important principle. Nobody in Scripture was ever judged because they were sick. They were judged because they were sinful. Sickness can be the result of sin. While sickness is not sin, it is possible for sickness to be the result of sin. Paul emphasized that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. He wrote the following to the Corinthians. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God? and that you're not your own. For you were bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body. Sometimes sickness results for a very simple reason. People do not take care of themselves. People do not heed God's commands and overindulge in food, alcohol, or work. They let their body run down to the place where it is susceptible to illness. <clears throat> Doing this is sinful, and thus sickness can be the result of sin. Sickness can result from overwork in the ministry. The scripture teaches that sickness can actually result from overwork God's ministry. In fact, Paul wrote that a fellow Christian worker, Epaphroditus, was sick to the place of death because of his work for the Lord. We read the following words to the Philippians. For he risked his life for the work of Christ, and he was at the point of death while trying to do for me the things you couldn't do because you were far away. The man of God became sick because he was overworked in the Christian ministry. Sounds like it. This is an important warning for those who are engaged in God's work. Rest is an important aspect of work. I find oftentimes I get involved in all kinds of uh, things that aren't going to be productive. And uh, i got to try to minimize that or do the things are, that are for best advantage for eternity, for others and myself. We find this also to be true in the Old Testament. The prophet Daniel became ill from the spiritual battle. The Bible says the vision of the evenings and the mornings that have been told is true. As for you, seal up the vision, for it refers to many days from now. So I, Daniel, was overcome and lay sick for some days. Then I arose and went about the king's business. But I was dismayed by the vision and did not understand it. Daniel became ill due to the spiritual battle in which he was engaged. Believers today can also have this same experience that they do not take care of their bodies. Jesus needed rest. We find that Jesus and his apostles needed rest from the labors in the ministry. Mark records the following account. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest for a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. If Jesus and his disciples needed to take some time off from their work in the ministry, then we certainly ought to do the same. 
Paul wrote about the need to be refreshed. The Apostle Paul wrote to the Corinthians about how they refreshed the man Titus. He put it in this manner. By all this we are, we are discouraged, encouraged. In addition to our own encouragement, we were especially delighted to see how happy Titus was because his spirit has been refreshed by all of you. Rest and refreshment is something which is necessary for all humans. There is a time to work and there is a time to rest. <clears throat> this is something which is crucial for each of us to understand. Indeed, we find that God commanded the people of the nation Israel to rest one day a week. In the book of Exodus, we read, it came about on the seventh day that some of the people went out together to gather, but they found that none. Then the Lord said to Moses, How long do you refuse to keep my commandments and my instructions? See, the Lord has given you the Sabbath. Therefore, he gives you bread for two days on the sixth day. Remain every man in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. That's a great example. So the people rested on the seventh day. So if you violate some of these things that are considered logical in the sense of staying healthy, don't blame God. And if you're sick, it doesn't mean that you're not a faithful Christian. Or well, the devil did it. While this command is not binding for modern day Christians, the concept behind it certainly is valid. We need to rest from our work. Sickness can result from the lack of exercise as well as rest. This brings us to our next reason as to why people become sick. It is often because there's not the correct amount of exercise as well as rest. As we study the Old Testament scripture, we find that the Lord provided the means where the people would get sufficient exercise as well as sufficient rest. During the Old Testament period, many of those from the nation of Israel practiced farming. Working a farm would obviously be physically strenuous. In other words, these people could get plenty of physical exercise. Add to this that each male had to go to Jerusalem three times a year to observe the various feasts. This type of exercise would also aid with the overall health of the people. While the Lord prescribed such exercise, he also prescribed rest. Indeed, one, one out of every seven days, the Sabbath day was the day of rest. One year out of every seven was the time for the land to rest. When the 50th year was about to come around, the people were, to com were commanded to rest for both the 49th as well as the 50th year. When we add all of this up, including the time it took for the males to walk to Jerusalem for the feast and back, we find some interesting facts. The people rested from their work one day out of seven, one week out of seven, one month out of seven, and one year out of seven. While physical labor was an essential part of their lives, so was rest. Thus, the Bible allows for the exercise as well as for needed rest. If we do not exercise our bodies, we give them or give them rest, then we will be subject ourselves to sickness. Sickness can be judgment from God. The Bible gives instances where God sent sickness to judge people. Certain members of the Corinthian church were judged for taking the Lord's Supper in an unworthy manner. Paul explained what happened to them. That is why many of you are weak and sick, and some have even died. There, therefore, it is possible that sickness can be a judgment of God. The nation of Israel was divinely judged by God. This was also true in Old Testament times. God warned the nation Israel that they would not be judged with sickness if they were not obedient to him. We read these words of Moses in the book of Deuteronomy. The Lord will send you disaster, panic, and frustration in everything you attempt to do until you are destroyed and perish quickly on account of the evil of your deeds because you have forsaken me. The Lord will make the pestilence cling to you until it has consumed you off the land that you are entering to possess. The Lord will afflict you with consumption, fever, inflammation, with fiery heart, heat, and drought, and with blight and mildew. They shall pursue you until you perish. These disasters which the people were to suffer would be sent by the Lord himself. Indeed, there would be consequences for disobedience. Moses further explained what would take place. The Lord will afflict you with the boils of Egypt and with tumors, festering sores, and the itch from which you